friends and welcome again to another Psalm devotional and today we're in Psalm 33. When we look at the world around us we, we see all sorts of plans being made. Uh, plans for war, tragically. Plans for peace, for independence, for electric self-driving cars, for changes in sport, plans to change marriage laws, tax laws, etc, etc. Many plans that are contrary to God's will and, and others, of course, that, that, that are not. But we need to remember something as we approach this psalm. Let's remember this, that God has his plans too. Listen as we read from Psalm 33, and I'm reading from the New Life Version. Psalm 33. Sing for joy in the Lord, you who are right with him. It is right for the pure in heart to praise him. Give thanks to the Lord with harps. Sing praises to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play well with loud sounds of joy. For the word of the Lord is right. He is faithful in all he does. He loves what is right and good and what is fair. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. The heavens were made by the word of the Lord. All the stars were made by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as in a bag. He places the waters in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world honour him. For he spoke, and it was done. He spoke with strong words, and it stood strong. The Lord brings the plans of nations to nothing. He wrecks the plans of the people. The plans of the Lord stand forever. The plans of his heart stand through the future of all people. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy are the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From where he sits, he looks upon all who live on the earth. He made the hearts of them all, and he understands whatever they do. No king is saved by the power of his strong army. A soldier is not saved by great strength. A horse cannot be trusted to win a battle. Its great strength cannot save anyone. See, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, and on those who hope for his loving kindness to save their soul from death, and to keep them alive when there is nothing to eat. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our safe cover. For our heart is full of joy in him, because we trust in his holy name. O oh Lord, let your loving kindness be upon us as we put our hope in you. As the psalm begins, the psalmist moves into praise for the whole of creation that he sees around him. He says in verse 6, The heavens were made by the word of the Lord. All the stars were made by the breath of his mouth. And he continues in that vein, in those verses. This is what God has done. This is the God that we come into as we pray and as we worship uh, today. People may indeed make many plans. And some plans that dishonour the Lord. Whether that's personal plans for my own life, well I want to do this. Uh, it may be national, international law uh, that is contrary to what God is wanting. But if it is contrary to his will, then there is this promise of scripture that ultimately he will bring all of that to nothing. Listen as we look in verse 10. He says this, the Lord brings the plans of nations to nothing. He wrecks the plans of the people. Now that doesn't mean he wrecks every plan that we ever make. Not at all. He wants to work, us to work with him as we make our plans. But the plans that are made without reference to him, ultimately, the risk is they'll be wrecked. They'll be brought to absolute nothing. So how do we respond to that thought? That the plans that God is going to bring to nothing... How's that apply to us? What's that mean for us? Verse 18, the psalmist says this, See, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him and on those who hope for his loving kindness to save their soul from death and to keep them alive when there is nothing 
to eat. You see, this is what God is like. His plan is for life. His plan for you today and for me is for life. He wants to give us life, but this life is in relationship with him, in community, in communion with him. The Lord Jesus said in John 10, verse 10, I have come that they may have life, life to the full, life in all of its fullness, abundantly life. That's the life that God longs for you and me to live in and to work in. Jesus in John 17 says these words that speaking to God, you have given him, that's the son, that's the Lord Jesus, you've given him power over all men. He's to give life that lasts forever to all you have given to him. This is life that lasts forever. It's to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's God's plan. That's the plan of Jesus. That's why Jesus came into this world, that we might know plans, eternal plans for eternal life for you and for me. And so in most of the world, whilst there may be plans that are differing from those that God would have, this again is what Jesus says in verse 20 of that same chapter, John 17. I don't pray for these followers, the 12 disciples only. I pray for those who put their trust in me through the teaching they've heard. May they all be as one father. As you're in me and I'm in you, may they belong to us. Then the world will believe that you sent me. I gave them the honour you gave me that they may be one as we are one. That is Jesus' plan for us. That is his desire for, for us, that we might be one with Jesus in seeing the plans of our Heavenly Father fulfilled in our lives and in the world that we inhabit. We trust in him. As the psalmist said in Psalm 33, we trust in him. His loving kindness is upon us. Why don't you reaffirm your love for and your faith in the Lord Jesus today? God bless you.